Got some questions here on acids, bases and buffers. So if you wanted to test yourself on this, uh, the link to the questions in the description. So download the questions, have a go and then watch the video for the answers. Okay, so the first one, we're given the pH of the protonoic acid and we've got to calculate the H plus concentration. So it's all linked by this equation here. So the hydrogen ion concentration is 10 to the minus pH, so it's 10 to the minus 2.89 and it comes out as option C as your answer. Okay, so question two is about a buffer solution. I tell my students, whenever you see the word buffer solution, think the word casid over salt. It's just my silly way of remembering the formula to calculate the H plus of a buffer solution. So it's the Ka, the acid dissociation constant of the weak acid in the buffer, multiplied by the concentration of the acid, divided by the salt concentration. Sometimes as a teacher I see students getting them the wrong way around. So acid over salt gets the acid on the top and salt on the bottom. So we're given the Ka value and we're told that the acid concentration is half the salt concentration. So feeding those numbers in, obviously 1.7 times 10 to the minus 4. So I'm just saying that the acid concentration, I'll make that 1, which is half of the salt concentration. So I'm saying that that's 2. That gives us an H plus concentration of 8.5 times 10 to the minus 5 and we minus log that and we get an answer of 4.07 so the answer was D. Question 3 now, so which statement is correct for a neutral solution at any temperature? So KW is only 1 times 10 to the minus 14 at 25 degrees C. Remember, water dissociates, so you're also going to have H plus ions and OH minus ions, so there is more than just water in the neutral solution. And the pH isn't always 7, and so therefore C is the right answer. The H plus concentration is always equal to the OH minus concentration for a neutral solution. Question 4, there's a lot to do for this one mark that's uh, up for grabs. So we've got to work out the H plus concentration when you mix those two acids together. So the starting point, the total volume of the 50 cm cubed and the 90 is 140. The moles of HCl that's going into the solution is concentration times volume, so 0 0.3. It's monoprotic and so the moles of H plus will also be 0 0.3. I've done the same for the nitric acid, also monoprotic, so 0.27 moles of H plus from the nitric acid. So the total moles of H plus is the sum of those two, so 0 0.57. The concentration of the H plus, moles over the volume, so there's that 140 cm cubed coming into play. So if you do that, you get the H plus concentration at 4.0714 dot dot dot. And so the answer was C. Question five, again, there's quite a lot to do just to get the mark. So we've got this um, solution of a weak monobasic acid. So I'm just calling it HA. It's 1% dissociated. So I've got the um, equilibrium there. And I use this ICE method, initial change equilibrium. So the initial um, concentration of HA is 0 0.04. So there's no H plus or A minus at the very start. The change is going to be 1% of 0 0.04. So it's 4 times 10 to the minus 4 is going to uh, dissociate. So 4 times 10 to the minus 4 is going to go, which means that the H plus concentration is going to go up by that amount from the 1 to 1 ratio. Likewise, the A minus. So that means at equilibrium, the difference will be the moles that you've got. So 0 0.0396, and obviously they're going to be the same because they started at zero. So we've got to work out the Ka for this acid. So that's the H plus concentration times the A minus concentration, all of the HA concentrations at equilibrium. So we're just going to feed these numbers into this and we get option B coming out as the right answer. Moving on to question six now. So you'll see I've put a few bits of information next to certain things. So the MR of the two hydroxypropanoic acids 90, that's gonna come in handy. Um, P 
pH 2.19, that's what the pH has to be. So we could work out the H plus concentration needed in there. We're given the Ka for the acid, and that's linked to the H plus concentration and HA by this equation here. So effectively, what we need to calculate is what does the concentration of this solution need to be. That will tell us how many moles are in a decimeter cubed. And if we just quarter that, it will tell us how many moles need to be in that 250 cm cubed. And then from the MR, we can work out how many grams are needed. So the first thing, the H plus concentration, 10 to the minus 2.19. So that's 6.46 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per decimeter cubed. And then I've just rearranged the Ka expression. So I've got the HA concentration equal to H plus concentration squared over Ka. I've fed the numbers in. And that means that this has to have a concentration of 0 0.302 moles per decimeter cubed. So in the 250 cm cubed, we're gonna need a quarter of that. So that's 0 0.0755 moles. So the mass is moles times MR. So 0 0.0755 times 90. And that comes out at 6.80 uh, grams. And that's to two decimal places. We use a two decimal place balance in our college. So I would suggest to my students to go for that uh, number of decimal places. Okay, so moving on to the procedure. So the first thing the student would need to do is measure those 6.80 grams of the acid out using a two decimal place balance. And they're going to dissolve that in a small amount of distilled water or deionized water. They're then going to transfer that to a 250 cm cubed volumetric flask. And they're going to rinse out the beaker and include the washings. They'll then make it up to the mark with distilled water. And then finally, they'll stop it and invert or shake to mix thoroughly. Moving on to part B. So we're told that 2-hydroxypropanoic acid is a slightly stronger acid than butanoic acid. So we've got these two acids reacting together. Because this is slightly stronger, it's going to donate its proton to this one. So that's going to give us those two products there. So this has donated this proton and it's given it to this. So you can see we've lost it there. So we've got a negative charge. This has gained the proton, so it becomes positively charged. And now we've just got to identify the conjugate acid base pairs. So obviously this is the acid. So we'll call this acid one. This is its conjugate base because they're linked together by that proton. If you put the proton onto this, you'd get back to that. So that's how they're linked. You can't have two acids on the same side, so this is obviously base. You can't have two of the same pair on the same side, so this is base two. Therefore, this must be acid two. And again, if you just think about, if this um, accepts a proton, it becomes that. So they are also linked by the proton transfer. Moving on to part C, first thing you've got to do is calculate the pH of the um, 0.185 moles per decimeter cubed sodium hydroxide. At 25 degrees C, so Kw is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So what we can do is, if we think about the dissociation of that sodium hydroxide, remember it's a strong alkali, strong base, so it's fully dissociated into its ions. So if that's 0 0.185, so is the OH minus ion concentration. So if you think about Kw equals the H plus concentration, times the OH minus concentration. Um, we know that and we now know that. So if we just rearrange, get the H plus concentration and minus log for the pH. So there it is there. So H plus concentration, one times 10 to the minus 14 over the 0 0.185. That gives us the H plus concentration of 5.41 times 10 to the minus 14. Minus log gives us 13.27. And the final part of the question is quite a tricky buffer calculation where we've got um, an excess of weak acid reacting with sodium hydroxide to form the salt. So basically we need to work out the remaining moles of acid, the, the amount of salt that's formed, work out their concentrations and then plug them into the acid over salt expression to get the H plus and then we can get the pH. So you can see the first thing I've done there is worked out the initial moles, I moles, okay, so of the acid and the sodium hydroxide, and that's just from concentration times volume of the acid, concentration and volume of the base, and you can see there that the acid's in excess, so we're going to have some of that left, 
and we're also going to make some salt as well and therefore that's why it's a buffer solution so the next thing i'm going to do is work out what we've got left okay so the end moles or the final moles of acid and salt well the acid's going to be from this many moles of acid that many will react away because of the one-to-one -one ratio so we're going to be left with this many moles of acid and obviously we're going to form the limiting reagents amount of moles so we're getting 0.0925 moles of salt formed remember they're in 125 cm cubed the total volume is 125 so we just need to turn those into concentrations now moles over volume moles over volume so they come out at the acid concentration 0 0.058 salt concentration 0 0.074 we're then going to put it into acid over salt so that gives us an H plus concentration of 1.18 times 10 to the minus 5 so I'm just going to minus log that to get the pH and I get a pH of 4.93